This episode of the Card Insiders podcast is brought to you by Omnisend. Omnisend enables nimble e-commerce teams to increase sales, not the workload, with highly relevant email and SMS marketing automation. One-click e-commerce stack integrations, pre-built workflows, and intuitive drag-and-drop editing makes it easy to get up and running without diving into the gritty details, unless you want to. More than 50,000 e-commerce brands use Omnisend to grow their business on autopilot, shouldn't you? To learn more about how Omnisend can help you grow your business, visit Omnisend.com. Welcome, everyone, to Season 2 of the Card Insiders Podcast. I'm your host, Greg Zakwitz. This season, I'll be speaking with e-com professionals to help you get your online business ready for the holiday season. For today's topic, we're discussing strategies to turn your holiday shoppers into year-round customers. Before we get into today's episode, I'd like to kindly ask you to tell your friends and colleagues about us, and please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or are interested in sharing your own email marketing or e-commerce story, we'd love to hear from you. And you can email us at podcast at omnisend.com. Now, let's jump into today's episode where I welcome to show the content marketing manager for Smile.io, Tim Peckover. Welcome to show, Tim. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Greg. Uh, it's, it's great to talk. You are not the first guest we've had. This is only the second season, and we've had multiple guests from Canada already. So we were chatting offline beforehand. You guys are kind of like, I guess, suburban, maybe outside Toronto a little bit, but just kind of tell everyone where you're from and then also a little bit about Smile types of companies you work with. So kind of hit the whole gamut in one shot. Sure. So Smile is headquartered in Kitchener, Ontario. Um, We're about an hour, hour and a half from Toronto. I'm personally about an hour further away from Kitchener in a little town called Tilsonburg. It's kind of smallest town I've ever lived in. Uh, We just moved here this summer, so it's, it's been great so far. Smile is a loyalty platform. We work with the scaling e-commerce companies. We're the largest loyalty program provider for scaling e-commerce brands. And we work with roughly 30,000 different brands, everyone from large enterprise to, like I said, the large portion of our customers are in that scaling segment. And then we work with some newer stores as well, helping them launch loyalty programs and start retaining their customers. Very nice. And I've got to ask, you said it's the smallest town you've ever lived in. What <laughs> took you there? Um, mostly that small town feeling. It's got everything you need, but there's not a whole lot of traffic. It's pretty slow paced. It's the kind of town where you, you go for a walk and whether they're your neighbors or not, everyone stops and says hi, which has been really great. That was a, probably a dangerous question. It could have been like, oh, my parole officer is over here or something. <laughs> yeah. It saves me the commute. <laughs> it was witness protection. and. <laughs> <laughs> Ruined. Yeah. All right. Very good. Obviously, we'll have contact info later in the episode, but also in this episode description in case anyone wants to check out Smile, but smile.io is an easy way to do it. So we're talking about loyalty for the holiday season. And this is, uh, I mean, it's not an easy topic ever to to get through. I think everyone knows that repeat customers are much more profitable than first-time customers, but it is a holiday season coming up. E-commerce has been exploding for a multitude of reasons for the over the last few months. This season is going to be no exception. We're going to have a lot of first-time customers coming in here. So what are some of the things that if a retailer is looking at trying to prepare themselves for the holidays right now, some things they can realistically do to help them prepare for kind of this onslaught of new customers coming in a very short period of time? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is reminding brands and merchants to think about how they're going to turn those first-time buyers into long-term customers right from the outset. So not just focusing on all of those awesome new acquisitions they're getting, but thinking right off the bat, okay, what's the next step after that sale? What am I going to do? So they're not just putting all of their efforts into acquisition and how they're going to close all those sales for BFCM. And then forgetting about that giant list of people that were really interested in them right afterwards. So it's it says a lot without saying anything, saying really think about those customers that are coming in and what you're going to do next. And the tail end of that is, okay, so what are you actually going to do next? What are the the retention strategies that you're going to put in place to start turning them into repeat customers? So if I'm a retailer and I'm saying, okay, I need to think about some of these things that I need to do next. And I don't really know what that is. Maybe we approach it from the customer side and we think about, you know, if we think about the things that are really most important to customers at this point in time, like what would... If a retailer's got to think about, hey, what what am I going to do next? But I need a starting point. Let's take it from a customer angle and say, okay, what do customers care about at this time of year, or just you know, January, February, March? Yeah, that helps us figure out, hey, what the heck are we going to do next? Yeah, I, I think personalization is one of the biggest things, and it's um, something you can include in so many different parts of the 
pre and post purchase process, but it especially helps in that that post purchase part where it's you know January, February, March. So including all of those personalization details in all of your emails, make sure that you're collecting as much information as you can in polite ways, obviously, so that you can include it in your interactions with customers. You know, if they're doing filling out reviews for your products, use that information that you've gathered to know, okay, you know, you have their purchase information as well. You know what sizes they're buying. You know whether they're buying for kids or for adults. You know, you know, generally what their interests are. So use some of those things to kind of personalize the content that you're sending them, whether it's it's just sending, you know, your order confirmation email that you're including some of that information you're using their name. If you have a loyalty program, include how many points they have, include how many points they've earned if it's a purchase, uh, post-purchase email. And all of those different touch points, the more personal you make it, the more they're going to remember your brand in those days, weeks, months afterwards. Yeah, I think personalization and segmentation that you're talking about is important. You mentioned order confirmation messages, which I find interesting. So we just released a Q2 stats report where we looked at you know every type of message under the world that we mm-hmm. sent. Order confirmation messages, and I've been touting, banging this drum for years, but order confirmation messages, if my memory serves me correctly, top of my head, I think it had around a 6% conversion rate for messages. So if you think about that, we're converting people that just purchased into something else. So there's a lot of personalization and optimization opportunities available within that order confirmation message. I think especially the holiday season, right? If we're talking about customer service info, things like this, this is a place to kind of start that that initial, I guess, goodwill or initial, you know, engagement building with the customer at that point. Are there specific tactics you could think? And I don't, I don't want to get into an order confirmation necessarily like tear down or anything yeah. today, but is there something from your standpoint where you look at order confirmation messages and say, okay, it, from where we sit, smile and working with our customers, yeah. is there something specific they should put in there that you have found to be kind of a good launching point for future engagement or future loyalty aspects with them? I mean, one of the biggest things that we see people doing, especially at this time of year, is gearing up for bonus points campaigns. So if it's an order confirmation email and they've earned 500 points, but you're planning to run a points redemption bonus campaign either you know, right after Christmas or in early January, use those emails to say, hey, we're going to run these bonus points campaigns in the next couple of months. And it just gives that you know, preliminary note in their head that, oh, right, I want to engage with this brand again so that I can put these points to good use. And I think that's kind of like you said, it's, it's that surprising conversion percentage on them where you can you can personalize it you can include this is how many points you have you can include this is how many points you are away from your next redemption opportunity or your next vip tier tier i think that's the key is is using those personalization touch points especially with loyalty to be able to make it personal but also you're adding value i think like you said not to get too deep into order confirmation emails but it's oftentimes You learn what you should do by seeing what you shouldn't do. And I think a lot of brands just really miss the mark with order confirmation emails because it's just so generic and it just looks like it could come from any brand. But it's really that personalization where it's on brand. It's got, you know, product recommendations that are related to the product they just purchased, but not identical to it. And it's got all the information that just makes it seem like, hey, we customize this email for you based on your engagements with our brand. Yeah. And I think the one thing there with order confirmation messages, same thing with shipping confirmation as well is, you know, generally they are a place, a go-to place for people if they have customer service questions, mm-hmm. right? it might be the first place they look if they want to contact you. So I think when we talk about creating customer loyalty, obviously customer service, at least in my opinion, is a huge component of that, especially nowadays where customer service tends to be lacking. So I would say on top of all the things you just mentioned, right? You would be surprised at how many retailers just don't do this, but clearly put out your customer service contact info in those messages as well as a nice launching pad for being accessible and open to people. You mentioned, Tim, something about bonus points here, which I want to get into loyalty programs a little bit because there's some people that are going to be listening to this that have loyalty programs. There's going to be some that do not, and there's going to be some that do not who are thinking that maybe it is too expensive or too complex to manage. So. Let's talk about this a little bit if we can. So let's take it first from the people that maybe do not have a loyalty program, and then we'll 
veer into those that maybe do and some tactics there. If I'm a retailer and we sit here today in, you know, in Q4, beginning of it, and I say, you know, I don't have a loyalty program, is it too late for me to start? I would say it's never too late, but definitely the sooner the better. The great thing is that depending on the loyalty platform, many of them, including Smile, you can create a loyalty program for free. You can get started for absolutely free. We can integrate with your Shopify store. We can integrate, you know, in just a couple clicks and you can get started, you know, literally in minutes, you can set up a loyalty program and start rewarding customers so that they're looking forward to engaging with your brand and they're earning points and spending points and keep coming back. Um, and you don't have to break the bank to get started. So what type of, are we talking about, I'm sure this is going to be the answer. I'm going to put you in a tough situation here, Tim, because sure. the answer is going to be completely dependent on the company, their integrations, right. e com platforms, like the whole nine yards, right? But yeah, say just a, a typical run in the mill, let's just let's just use uh, Shopify as an example. So I'm a, I'm a retailer who sells on, I've got Shopify as an e com platform. Like how easy is that integration? Is it pretty pretty simple for the most part, or is are we still looking at like say three weeks to a month to get going here? I know you you mentioned it was pretty easy sooner than later, but we'll just say a typical Shopify customer. Like, what are they looking at from a realistic time frame? From what you have seen, realistically, you go to the Shopify app marketplace, find Smile, you click install the app, you authorize it to connect with your Shopify store, and Literally, all you're doing is setting up a little bit of your branding, your colors. If you want to have a a logo or your banner on your rewards panel, you're setting the thresholds for uh, points earning, points redemption, setting up a couple of the rewards. And it's literally minutes. It's not hours even or days or weeks or months. You can set up a highly performing loyalty program in less than 10 minutes. Very good. And then let's talk about some different incentives because the one thing with every retailer is going to struggle for the holiday season, and this has been the case for years and years and years and years, is discounting, right? So just as a whole, the industry is coming back to themselves in the discounts, but now consumers expect deep, heavy discounts all year long, but especially this time of year, which causes a lot of challenges for repeat customers and customer loyalty after the holiday season's over where brands are not going to be sending 75% off discounts every single day for the rest of the year. So it it creates a lot of challenges from a loyalty standpoint. Obviously, loyalty programs can be set up different ways to kind of counteract that. But let's take loyalty programs aside, weave it into the answer here if you want. But what are some tactics that you know companies can realistically do to help I guess, overcome the discounting dilemma that they're faced with. So, you know, how do I get someone to come back to me in January when I'm not offering 75% off? Yeah, we've been for probably around the past year and a half, two years almost, um, we've been talking a lot about the value of building a brand community where you're not just trying to get a sale, get a sale, find a customer, acquire a customer, but like you're trying to do that nurturing and that engaging in order to retain them so that they love your brand and what your brand stands for and they love engaging with your brand and seeing your brand on social media so that it doesn't really matter if you're having a sale or when you're having a sale they just want to buy your products regardless when you launch a new product they want to get it if you're having you know even if it's not a giant 75 percent off sale but if you're just running like a 10 percent off sale they're like great i'm gonna buy from them because i wanted to buy from them anyway i think that's one of the biggest things is just making your customers part of your brand community and part of your brand story so that you're not just a company that sells them things, but you're part of, you know, lifestyle is such a, a hokey word at times, but you, you kind of become part of their lifestyle and how they identify with the products that they use. And what about from a loyalty program standpoint? So circle back to those that maybe do have a loyalty program. Like, are there certain things they can do during the holidays, you know, in preparation for the holidays to, to further create uh, value from the loyalty program. So we always talk about discounts, right? So a lot of, you'll see a lot of, you mentioned bonus points before, but a lot of times you'll see promotions during the holidays as opposed to a percentage off or a dollar amount off. They'll give you double bonus points or things like this. But how can retailers effectively use loyalty programs during you know the next two months to entice customers to either sign up for loyalty programs or to make them more uh, effective 
versus discounting. Does that make sense the way I framed it, Tim? Yeah, I think so. I think the biggest thing is just making engagement really a part of your whole brand experience right now. So, you know, whether it's bonus points or whether you're just adding more ways for customers to engage with your brand and be rewarded for it, you know, social following, social liking, newsletter signups, depending on how your e-commerce app stack is set up, rewarding for reviews, that sort of thing to really help them build up that points balance so that they can cash it in later so that they have that you know those percentage off or dollar off discounts that they can cash in and that that points balance not only helps them come back but it also keeps them it keeps them loyal in the sense that they know psychologically that they have this value that they've attained with your brand and so it keeps them from going to your competitors because that would be lost value if they switched brands and so i having all those different ways to engage and earn a points balance and then it's reminding them that they have that points balance um, to be able to cash in later, especially when we're talking about discounts during BFCM and trying to stay away from having to do giant discounts. Even if you're giving away more points, if it's a bonus points campaign or you're doing extra welcome points for new rewards members, having higher points allotment, or I guess it's less points allotment for discounts. So I guess what I'm trying to say is so. If if they have more points and if even if they're able to cash them in and get 20 or 30% off with points, the difference between having just like a 20 or 30% straight discount on orders is that they have to come back to use those points. So they might be earning way more than they usually would, but they're coming back and placing another order. So you're getting more revenue out of that second or third sale. So even if you're having to give more points away during BFCM, it's not as big of a loss or it can actually be more profitable than just having to do huge discounts right off the bat because it keeps them coming back and it keeps them engaged. And then it gives you more opportunities for different touch points to engage with them, to invite them into your brand community and start having those interactions with them. It makes a lot of sense. I almost start to think here that if, let's go back to those first-time customers. So we've got a loyalty program here, right? The kind of the hurdle there is how do I get someone to sign up for that program? Assuming that they might be shopping for the discount, they might've just found the brand. They might not be sure if they want to sign up for the program. They're not sure if they want to come back. So there's that hurdle of getting people to sign up for the first time to hopefully get them hooked into that community, building the engagement, getting them to come back to use the points like you talked about. Are there any specific tactics that a company can use to encourage or entice someone to sign up, a first-time customer to sign up for their loyalty program? Yeah, there are two big things. The first one is those welcome points. So it's actually, you're giving them something for signing up. You're not just saying create an account for the sake of creating an account, but they're getting something out of it. And then making it clear that what those points are actually worth. So it's, you know, you're getting, you know, with, even if it's something small, like five bucks or like even just one or two dollars worth of points, having that set up so that they can see, oh, yeah, creating an account is beneficial for me. It's something I actually want to do. That's really big. The next thing is if you have a VIP program is having those really valuable higher tiers, brands like uh, Sephora really hit, do this right by having their their upper echelon loyalty tiers have really amazing perks. And so it's having those really raggable things that customers can potentially attain that motivates them just to sign up in the first place. Just knowing that, hey, if I plan on spending a lot here or if I plan on engaging a lot with this brand, I could get something really valuable in the end. And I don't just have to pay for it. I'm earning that. And you mentioned kind of showing people the value of of that, right? So mm -hmm. where would you promote that? Would you promote in the welcome message, the welcome series? Would you put it in the order confirmation message, right? Hey, sign up for a program. This, these are the tangible benefits for you would get dedicated emails. How would you recommend to a customer of yours to advertise how and where to advertise the program and the benefits of it to encourage that sign up? I would say you could do it pretty much anywhere that you're currently marketing, or if, you know, if, basically anywhere you're marketing, whether it's, you know, on your website, you could have uh, a banner, you could have an announcement bar in your emails, you can have loyalty program information embedded in your newsletters, have some information about the different perks, the different tiers on social media, whether you're running loyalty specific campaigns, 
or if you're running other campaigns, you can embed some parts of your loyalty program and some of the perks into it. Another way to do that is using user-generated content. If you have a loyalty program set up and you have members that are earning those really valuable VIP rewards, motivate them to post those images on social media and tag you and then feature those images. Starbucks does this really well. I like talking about Starbucks a lot because I love coffee, but they also have a good rewards program where once you hit that gold status with Starbucks, they actually send you that little gold card to show your status. And social media is just full of people posting images of that gold card. Even though all it really says is that like you drink a lot of coffee, it's it's a, <laughs> a, a thing to be proud of. And so you can do the same whether you're selling you know clothing or cosmetics or jewelry or truck parts, whatever it is, if you set up your VAP program so that those upper echelon tiers are, are really valuable and then just motivate people to share that. And then you can use that in not just social media, but you can use that UGC on your website. You can embed that UGC in your marketing emails as well. Yeah, just to be clear, the gold card from Starbucks is quite different than the black card from Amex, just so everyone is aware of that. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned something very interesting before, Tim, about VIP customers and VIP segments here. So I want to kind of step back and say, okay, let's ditch the loyalty program for a minute and let's talk about those VIPs because I think it's going to be transferable. But if I'm a company that does not have a loyalty program, say, okay, you know, I'm thinking about it, but realistically, I'm not going to be able to do it until after the holidays. I just got too much going on. So obviously, from an email standpoint, right, if it's obviously integrated with your econ platform, which it should be, you have the ability to create those VIP segments. So I want to take it from your experience on the VI the loyalty program side, but transfer it to people without a loyalty program. So say for the holiday season, they want to do some testing with, say, these VIP segments. Have you found through smile that there's a particular type of VIP segmentation that works better. And what I mean by that is, do we have, say, you know, it could be higher AOVs, it could be number of orders, it could be whatever kind of criteria they want to use. Is there a criteria that's maybe better than others to kind of test into that? Is it the number of orders they've made, the average order value? So I know that I've got a a group of customers who were my average order value is forty dollars, and they are spending seventy five, but they've only purchased twice. Is that a, a more valuable VIP segment generally than people who have maybe bought four times from me that maybe have lower AOVs? Does that make sense? Yeah, how we it makes sense. Yeah, I think like you said, it really depends on the merchant and how they're set up and like where their where their profits are. Like if you have a really expensive product that's low margin then that's you're going to want to set up your VIP program or think about how you set up a VIP program differently than someone who has um, a lower cost but higher margin product, right? So I think it really depends on the merchant themselves and, and what their products are like. Not necessarily dismissing AOV, but really it's the products themselves. And I guess the profit on the AOV is kind of what it boils down to as well. Makes a lot of sense. And I, I would say there from retailers, if they're looking at that, they can kind of figure that out for themselves. But then for first time customers, right? So if you say your VIP is, let's just go AOV and just say 75 bucks, that's a good, based on our profit margin, that is what we consider a good VIP segment for us. If a retailer knows this, they can do those segments for first time customers coming in and say, okay, first time customer coming in this holiday season, they spent 80 bucks. They theoretically might qualify long term as this VIP. Right, we can create segments on that and then maybe target them with different messaging to test out maybe ways to get that customer to come back for a second time purchase and figure out what strategies might work or not work. So I think it comes down to definitely playing with segmentation, even without a loyalty program to figure out, hey, is this the right VIP segment for me? Do they have the right tactics for this? And it might even help shape that conversation if they want to get into some sort of loyalty program in the new year. A conversation with, hey, we have we've seen this. Can you help with this, right? Or shift this with a different mindset or thinking to apply what we've learned here, apply it somewhere else. Hope that makes sense to everyone listening. But I think there's definitely things you could do with email segmentation or e-com platform segmentation that even without a program, you can use it to learn something for Q4 and then implement it in 2021. Tim, I want to ask you a little bit about trends that you've maybe seen over the last couple of years. So in terms of seasonal shoppers turning into repeat shoppers. 
you know, has there been, from your standpoint, either an increase or a decrease in the volume of seasonal shoppers that have then converted to repeat customers after the New Year's and maybe any tactics that you have maybe seen shift for over time along those same lines? So, hey, you know, discounts used to work, but we've seen bonus points really be picking up steam and be more valuable the last couple of years or vice versa, right? Yeah. I, so can you shed a little light on that for us? Yeah, for sure. I, I think that bonus points have been something that has really picked up for sure. Another thing that I think I've seen a lot of is brands that are using more experiential rewards in order to motivate customers to come back. So when they have a loyalty program, especially with VIP, it's having those really valuable perks at higher tiers, like access to private Facebook groups or behind the scenes videos or chances to get early access to sales or early access to new products. Those sort of things have been really valuable for getting customers in the door. And then once they're in the door with that BFCM sale, it th- those experiential rewards are kind of the hook to keep them coming back. Because it's like, hey, you may have just purchased this thing from us because you were buying it for a friend for Christmas or whatever. But now you have these points that are you've built up. And if you keep engaging with us, you have the ability to earn these awesome perks two, three months, six months, a year from now. That's been a really big trend that I've seen. Another one would be really using points expiry to re-engage customers. So if they you know, placed an order in November and you have your points expiry set for, you know, even if it's a year where next year, next fall, you're able to re-engage those customers. And, you know, even if you're only, you know, re- animating them for next BFCM, if that's if that's all your goal is, you can use points expiry just to reanimate those and re-engage those customers that purchased from you last year so that they don't lose out on the points that they used from their last BFCM purchase. Very good. I think the points expiry too, I mean, with the discount if you don't have a program, but you know, if you think about a post-purchase message, like a thank you message, or you could even do this in an order confirmation message, right? Here's another example here, but say, okay, you know, we're thinking about a points expiry. So, you know, you could always just frame some verbiage. Hey, thanks for a recent purchase. Your purchase qualifies you for XYZ discount. And it's just a discount for them and set an expiration there and then figure out, you know, is 14 days, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever. Does that help them come back to make a second purchase? Something definitely to test out there to figure out one, if you don't have a loyalty program, but are thinking about moving into one at some point, you know, how your customers actually respond to things like that. Just make sure the incentive is kind of in line with holiday incentives. But I think it's a good example where you can transfer from loyalty side to non-loyalty side and the principle stays the same. Well, and like you said, it's a good way to test things out. So if you're doing something like that and seeing that, hey, in our post-purchase emails, if we send, you know, 15% off coupons, people use them and they keep coming back to use them, that might be a good indication that a loyalty program would work really, really well with your customers. Yeah. Yeah. Great example. Great insights as well. So Tim, I think for something that's maybe holiday specific, that is maybe not necessarily as applicable through the rest of the year, right? There, there's going to be a lot of holiday specific things that happen, increase in shoppers, increase in discount, you know, discounts that people want. From a loyalty side, is there something that you see that is very specific to the holidays that retailers should be thinking about that maybe we don't see a lot of during the rest of the year or is it pretty much the same, just escalated with the volume of shoppers? Yeah, I'd say it's the same, just escalated with the volume of shoppers. You do see because there's so many more orders going through and oftentimes because people are trying to to get discounts to try to double dip on um, how much they're getting off their BFCM purchases, there's off an influx in the number of points being earned compared to the rest of the year. And so it's it's really making sure that you're setting up those different engagement things to be able to motivate people to come back and cash those in. So they don't just have these giant points balances that are hanging around for months and months and months, but it's making sure that, you know, even for your own balance books, so you don't have a whole bunch of points just sitting there from customers that are being unused, but motivating them to come back and spend them to keep that points redemption ratio as high as possible, and then keep the number of outstanding points lower too. Very good. And then, Tim, if I ask you, just kind of put your BS rater on and just say, you know, if you want to grab someone by the collar 
and just shake them and say, hey, holidays are coming. Here's this one thing. Do it. Don't ask me any questions and you'll be happy for it. What is that? What is that one thing you would tell them to do? Other than start a loyalty program right now, I would say personalize your customer engagements. I think that's the biggest thing for making sure that your customers, like I talked about earlier, feel that connection with your brand and want to join your brand community so that they keep coming back because they love who your brand is and what your brand stands for, not just the individual purchase that they made. Very good. Tim, when it comes to kind of this loyalty aspect and trying to get people to come back for next year, what did I neglect to ask you today that you feel is important for the audience to know, if anything? That is a good question, and I can't think of anything off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, I always jam people with that one. If it comes up <laughs> while we're still chatting, let me know. Sure. Very good. It, and Tim, we always ask the guests here, you know, where they're digesting business information from. Some people like to read books, some listen to audiobooks, podcasts, you know, newsletters, websites, whatever it might be. Where are you getting your business information from? Anything you might be able to recommend? Sure. I do read quite a few business newsletters. Lean Lux is a great one as well as 2 p.m. But one of my favorites right now is one called Chips and Dips. It's a Substack a newsletter by uh, a lady named Emily. And it's I really like the format as well as the, the information in it. It's Chips and Dips. So she starts off with chips, which are just some like quick little tidbits about e-commerce news. Dips. She does a dip section that's a more deep dive into a specific topic. And then she wraps up each of her newsletters with an actual recipe for a dip with chips. Oh, very good. Yeah. That's uh we, we've got on the lean logs and a 2 p.m. on here before. Yeah. That's a new one. So that's I'm gonna definitely check that out. Tim, one meal for the rest of your life. What are you choosing? Ooh, that is a hard one. I'm not sure if I go with pizza or pierogies, but I would, I'm going to go for pierogies. Very good. Now, some good, some good, like cheese and potato pierogi. Now you're talking like Mrs. T's or you're looking for something a little more authentic. What are you going with there? Um, authentic for sure. Okay. Cause you're talking to a Polak right now. So. Okay. Yeah. We, I haven't found a good pierogi place yet and near our new place. So I'm definitely on the lookout for something good, but I, pierogies are definitely one of my favorite, like all time meals. That's your next business opportunity right there. Progi hut. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Tim, any questions for me today, man? Uh, I don't think so. It's, it's been really great talking to you. It's, uh, I love talking about e-commerce and loyalty. And especially right now, it's, it's on retention is on everyone's minds. I love being able to, to share what I've gleaned from working with all the different merchants we have at Smile. And we'll obviously have contact info for you and the company in the episode description and show notes. How about verbally? Why don't you throw that out for if someone wants to reach out to you, the company, whatever it might be, any sort of contact info you're willing to throw out. Why don't you do that right now for us, please? Sure. The website is smile.io. We call ourselves smile or smile.io. So if you just remember the brand name, you can probably find the website. My, You can look me up on LinkedIn, Tim Peckover, or shoot me an email, tim at smile.io, and I'd be happy to chat or uh, connect you with uh, whoever it is at Smile that can help you out. Very good. Tim Peckover, everyone, content marketing manager at smile.io. Tim, thank you very much for your time today. Enjoy the conversation to everyone listening. Thank you for your time as well. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something today. Again, if you have any questions, comments, or are interested in sharing your e-commerce or email marketing story, please just let us know. Podcast at omnisend.com. Until next time, have a great day and be kind to one another.